and go. Bye, baby. Onto his blanket. What a cutie. <laughs> Flop. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Hello everybody on YouTube and the rest of the internet, whoever happens to see this. Uh, before I jump into the content of this video, I just wanted to do a quick announcement that I am officially on Clubhouse. I'm in love with this app. I love speaking my voice and sometimes I don't want to like look cute or be on camera <laughs> or, you know, put a whole lot of effort into my physical self in order to contribute to thoughts, causes and ideas um, online. And so Clubhouse has been really cool for me to get to voice my voice without having to have like a whole YouTube platform or something. Um, so I have started a club on Clubhouse called the K-Man Club. And I really want, basically, long story short, I see this app blowing up. Facebook is already in process of developing their own version of it. It's just a matter of time before this new um, talk side of things really takes off. You already can see it with the popularity of podcasts. like. To, in my opinion, this is this is obvious that this is the next big trend. Um, we're in the middle of it. So, specifically when it comes to Clubhouse, I've noticed a lot of people talking about K-Man and K-Manians um, and not actually having any K-Manian voices or representation on there. So I'm working to build a K-Man community on Clubhouse and I would love to have some actual K-Manians join me. Find me on there, connect with me. I would love to chat with you guys about some of these things that I discuss in my videos um, in a more interactive setting. And I know so many of you have questions for me. <laughs> I see them in my comments all the time. So the easiest way to get your question answered, um, you know, I've thought about doing a Patreon for that kind of stuff, but really I enjoy Clubhouse. So if you want your questions answered, Find me on Clubhouse, okay? <laughs> Find me. Um, I will try to do at least one room a week in the K-Man Club. That's my commitment to you guys. Right now, I'm the only person in that club, so you gotta join the club first or I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> but if you have questions that you want answered, if you want tips, advice, if you wanna just connect with actual K-Manians, um, or if you're an expat, I know I'm part of a group on Facebook for women in K-Man. If you're on that group, um, I would actually love if an admin from that group would reach out to me because I think we can build that community in a really cool and positive way on Clubhouse. But yeah, basically, if you're interested in K-Man at all, if you have questions, if you want to move there, if you live there, if you are K-Manian, basically anything K-Man related, find me on Clubhouse. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so without further ado, um, I want to get into this video. But also, leave me a comment down below if you would like for me to live stream on YouTube right here on my channel at the same time when I'm live on Clubhouse because that's something I'm considering. I know some people don't want to go through the hassle of downloading a new app and everything. Um, so let me know if you would participate in that if I did do that because that's another option. But if you want to actually talk to me, if you want to actually um, you know, ask me a question, like quote unquote in person online, get on Clubhouse. Give me a shout if you're basically trying to find an invite because um, it is invitation only right now. But I'm gung-ho on carving out uh, a community for Caymanians on Clubhouse because I've been in travel rooms where thousands of people are talking about their travel experiences and there's people talking about Cayman and not a one of them has ever lived there or seems to have any kind of perspective from any kind of Caymanians so I want to bring that representation on there um, and yeah so connect with me that's pretty much all I'm really rambling now this is already gonna be half of the video so on to the main topic thanks for yeah bye <laughs> What's up, Benny? You enjoying the sunshine, baby? Yes, always. Okay, little friend, you want your seat? This is Benny's seat. Okay. Good job. Okay, so, hello, YouTube. I hope it's not too windy. I'm coming at you from my backyard today. I also have air conditioning noises in the background. Um, so just not an ideal video, but I didn't want to do the whole YouTuber set up in the apartment today. I just didn't feel like it, okay? I need the fresh air. I need the vitamin D. This is where we are, so deal with it. Thank you. One day I'll invest in a mic, I promise. <laughs> Actually, I have a mic. It's just still in K-Man. Anyways, I just wanted to post some sort of conclusion to my previous video, because um, that was in the middle of all of the election madness, and obviously all of that has come to a close at this point. And basically what happened was after much back and forth, much drama, uh, we do have a majority independent government in Cayman now, which is amazing! So yes, the only reason why I didn't keep squawking was because I got my way. <laughs> 
not gonna lie, I'm not even gonna pretend like it's something that it's not. Um, but I do think that the outcome I was hoping for is the most positive outcome for all of K-Man um, and everybody who wants to enjoy it. So, with that said, like I said, I don't want to make this long video. That's really all I want to say about that. Um, there is a K-Manian gentleman, um, an artist and professional. His name is John Reno Jackson. I have actually never met John in person, um, but I did reach out to him on Instagram when I saw his video about the election because uh, it really resonated with me. Um, I also connect really with his work as well, so I'm going to link his, uh, basically all of his information, his social pages and everything in the description below. Um, please check him out. He's an incredible Caymanian creative um, and I would love to see success for people like him. So. Yeah, so I'm actually going to include the video that he posted on his Instagram in this video. It's about to come up in the next, I don't know, few seconds, hopefully, if I don't ramble too much. <laughs> um, because I feel like he spoke so eloquently and so concisely, and he really echoed so many of the thoughts that myself and other Caymanians were having um, in a way that was more beautifully put than I probably could have said it. So instead of trying to reframe his words, I'm actually just going to include the video here with his, per pardon me, with his permission. Um, and I ask that you don't just watch this video. Actually, sorry, traffic. Um, actually, click on the links that I provide for his information below, um, and please do actually, you know, contribute. Maybe go and like some of his posts or follow him on social media. So I'm going to play his video now. I hope you watch through to the end and enjoy. Hey, people, what's up? So I said I was gonna make a little video. It's not gonna be anything crazy. I just wanted to share some information with you guys so that way um, when people start talking about what's going on in general right now in Cayman with the elections race turning into kind of a shit show. So um, I just wanted to let you guys have a bit of power. Someone starts questioning why you feel the way you do and I felt like it was really important. So let me first just um, state that I'm not trying to say who you should vote for, who you should have voted for, or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you guys information. So yeah, I just wanted to just give a bit of context here. So a lot of people are very upset with the way that uh, the PPM are dealing with the fact that they have opposition right now. And it's coming from a place of some sort of angst. And that angst comes from privilege. Uh, majority of people in the PPM are people who have had great privilege their entire lives in terms of generational privilege. And these families control the country. If you don't know that, majority of these families control the country. They control the way the system works. They control the way everything that happens in this country works. But I mean, and this is not, this is well documented. This isn't like me just conspiracy theory, you know. Here's a book by Roy Bodden, okay? I'm going to quote some of it for you. So this goes back to the 60s. And um, this is something that uh, sociologists have documented in coming here. So uh, here's a quote and a quote of the dominant class ideology. The privileged white and light-skinned elite were assumed to be inherently superior both racially and culturally. And this assumption was reinforced by a white racist social ideology and the dependence of the society on a European imperial power, Great Britain. So, oh, well, let me read this next sentence too. The dominant class ideology assumed that landowners, the wealthy, and the highly educated had a natural claim to national leadership, preeminent political influence, and social wisdom. The power structure maintained itself on the basis of patron-client links between the wealthy light-skinned elite and the black peasant, artisan, and unskilled laboring classes. Equally important was the limited sense of efficacy and subjective feeling of power on the part of subordinate lower classes and black majority. So basically, to summarize, rich white Caymanians have always been in power and they don't know anything but power. End of story. And, you know, this is well documented. Again, it's in a book, okay? It's because we struggle with an identity issue in this country and figuring out what we mean, and especially in a society where we've been told that we don't mean anything for a long time and that the only people who matter are people who look like they're from the UK, you know? I think that the discussion of racial boundaries in this country is something that needs to be spoken about, you know? Understanding uh, racial undertones, colonial undertones, 
and classism. Classism is our main societal issue, as well as colorism. Our society, Kimani society, is unique in the way that it has kind of divided us. So to go back to why I think that what's going on right now isn't unheard of, and that I think that every Kimanian should be able to protest peacefully and not worry about if politicians don't like it. Because at the end of the day, they're not gonna like anything you do because the only thing they like is making money off of us and making you know shitload of kickback. And whether they wanna admit it or not, they play this country like a monopoly board. We're just a monopoly board. So um, I think it's time that we actually have real politicians who actually care about us, like Wayne Panton and the independents. People who you know, actually want to see this country succeed. I mean, Wayne Panton is uh, pro-LGBT. He has also, um, he, he's the one who put in place the environmental impact assessment. Um, so people can't just go blow up half of the country and make quarries and, you know, dig up the forests and stuff like that. They actually have to do an environmental impact survey, which costs millions of dollars sometimes. Um, there's a lot of things that go on in this country that I think I find very confusing that um, this kind of stuff gets held back from the community. Like how every minister just gave themselves a 15% raise for literally just because. Because, oh, we're parliament now. So we give us all a 15% raise, but the rest of the government doesn't get a raise at all. You know, what about all the civil servants that, you know, can barely afford to live in this country while the ministers are making $200,000 a year to get kickback in their pockets because they're all merchant class. So, I mean, again, it's all in like books. Like, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not trying to be disruptive of people, you know. Uh, I can understand how. But I'm just tired of the censorship in this country. I think it, it's, it, it's crazy to me that we live in a society where everything is censored, where people can't be what they want to be, be who they want to be. So, um, but let me explain one more thing. So, Orman Panton. I'm not sure if there's a direct relation to Wayne Panton, but Orman Panton founded the NDP, the National Democratic Party, in the late 50s, early 60s. And it quickly became very popular with locals uh, just because of the fact that it was for locals, you know. And it was, you know, it had a lot of positive sort of effects with it. But historically, the UK backed the Merchant Class Party and eventually pushed the NDP out of power. So this is something that has happened before. Um, at the end of the day, the vested interests of uh, capitalists like DART, um, you know, developers, they're gonna put money in the pockets of the PPM to keep the aggressive developments happening in this country, uh, the whoring out, so to speak, of what we have available to us. And this is why young Caymanians can't find land. This is why young Caymanians can't find jobs. This is why this stuff doesn't exist, because we're allowing politicians to take our country and just use it like a wet rag. And I think that that's where, when you see the rhetoric and you see the responses coming from, um, you know, the PPM over the last few days, it is actually just rich white people complaining and moaning and bitching about the fact that people don't want to vote for them that people don't want to, them to be in power, that they can't understand why people would want a different solution and that they're the best bet. They don't, they don't want to be the best bet. They just want the money, plain and simple. They just want as much money as possible and they just want this country to end up looking like Manhattan. Have you ever seen that meme of K-Man looking like Manhattan in 2077? That will happen. And that's not even, that, that meme should just be the development plan for the PPM. But I am against um, like whiny, bitchy, moany ass politicians who just can't understand the fact that they're not getting what they want. And that privilege goes a long way when half of the country can barely afford to live in it. And there's gonna be another mass exodus and migration of Caymanians to go live in other countries because we can't afford to live here. So. This country isn't for Caymanians anymore. And that statement is true. So if you guys want to do the right thing, go out and protest. Go out and say, I don't want this. Because at the end of the day, the people are the people who are in power, not the politicians. Go out and buy this book because it's more um, accurate than ever. And I think that you'll learn some stuff in it. There is some stuff in here that's kind of like, meh, but 
it, for general knowledge, I think this is one of the most important books you can buy. So please go out and buy this book and um, just read. Read, people. Um, you guys want to be informed of what to do, just read and take everything seriously. Then go out and vote. Register to vote. Because, again, McKeeve only got in because he got 28 votes. That's 28 people who didn't register to vote. Anyways, that's my two cents. All right, so that was John Reno's video. Thank you guys um, for watching, for hearing him out, for hearing me out. Um, and don't forget to leave me a comment if you would like me to stream here on YouTube when I'm live having a K-Man chat on Clubhouse. Um, and or connect with me on Clubhouse. <laughs> I really, really, really am serious. I wanna actually get to talk to you guys and have real conversations about these things because I find, especially from K-Manians, sometimes on the you know, trickier topics like LGBTQ rights and stuff like that. I have a lot of Caymanians that often disagree with me. And I am a very argumentative person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a very feisty person. So I can kind of quit back in the comments in a way that seems um, a lot harsher than how I might actually mean something. And I found that uh, the actual verbal discourse on Clubhouse is much, much more productive than what's been going on in my comment sections. So. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, if you just want to talk about K-Man stuff, please find me on Clubhouse. Um, and with that, I'm going to wrap up this video, <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!